my name is Jim Vieira. I'd like to speak to a strange aspect of the giant phenomena, a very specific notation uh, that is uh, reported in the Bible and other esoteric documents of, of six fingers and six toes. Now this is a rare genetic condition um, that exists in some humans, but it is uh, portrayed as supernatural, divine, or malevolent in sources all around the planet. And I'm going to dig deep into this mystery, a mystery that you'll see that many academics have independently dove into and are basically asking questions about. I think it's a good example that this mystery is worthy of further investigation. Now, I'll let the audience uh, make what they will of, of the evidence, but I feel personally this shows disconnected cultures talking about the same strange and specific things that, that really uh, make a compelling case that there's something to the story. <clears throat> so I have been studying this giant phenomena for about two decades now and have pieced together my work in a book with my co-author Hugh Newman. I'm going to start today with a biblical quote, uh, Samuel 2120, and there was yet a battle in Gath where was a man of great stature who, that had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, and he was also born to the giant. So it's specifically noted that this giant had six fingers and six toes. And you also have at the Library of Ashburnabal in, in Iraq, modern day Iraq, uh, these ancient texts um, that were uh, portraying a story of human origins. And one of the tablets talks about uh, polydactylism. In fact, the first mention of polydactyl in written form is found in Summa Ibzu, an Assyrian compendium of 24 tablets with approximately 2,800 tetraological omens. Most of the tablets were found in the Ashpurnabal Library in Nineveh. And here I am at the British Museum uh, with some of these cuneiform texts. Its third and fourth tablets contain a total of 15 omens pertaining to polydactyl, six fingers on one hand and six fingers on both hands, six toes on one foot and bilaterally, as well as six digits on both hands and feet. It basically tells you what each means. One is a positive omen, one is a negative if you have a child that's born with one or the other. So in the academic paper, uh, Polydactyl and Development, Inheritance and Evolution, the authors point out <clears throat> uh, the following. Cuneiform texts on polydactyl, votive child foot with six toes from Sumer, 26th century BC. And the inscription says, what I, am I to do for my child with six toes? Here is the votive with six toes, and here is the inscription that, that describes the condition and what the omen means. We also have this, this strange being in medieval times with nine toes. So it's in the Arnstein Bible of a polydactylous man exhibiting nine toes on each foot. Here is a newspaper clipping from the 60s and you see uh, just incredible amount of digits. A rare case of cross polydactyl in humans combined preaxially and postaxially asymmetrical polydactyl with six complete fingers as well as an extended thumb on the right hand, plus seven complete fingers on the left hand and seven toes on each foot, total of 27 digits. And, you know, is this just a genetic fluke that, that keeps reemerging in humans because it's associated once again with the, the divine and the supernatural? Or is it an inheritance from a parent race that is sometimes associated as, as giant or having uh, multiple digits? That, that is sometimes the esoteric viewpoint. And the great uh, sleeping prophet, Edgar Cayce, actually, I went through all his readings, 25,000 readings, 14 million words cataloged at the Virginia Beach Library. And I found this, this account uh, where Cayce describes Mu Zuin, who traveled to the Gobi Desert from the lost Pacific continent of Lemuria in 9026 BC as being six foot tall, blue-eyed, blue hair dark gold, hands six-fingered. He's not portrayed as a giant, <clears throat> but in this area of the Gobi Desert, he is portrayed as having six fingers and blonde hair and blue eyes, which is unique um, to the area. And here's the Gobi Desert region. 
We also find Pliny the Elder mentioned his encounter, the encounter between the Romans and the Ceres at Taprobane, who were the Chinese. They exceeded the ordinary human height, had flaxen hair and blue eyes, and made an uncouth sort of noise by way of talking. So blonde hair and blue eyed is not what we think of as, as Chinese people. And in fact, the Tarim Basin mummies were found several years ago, which um, were, I think, around two or 3,000 uh, BC was, was when, they were, um, when these people lived. And they had red hair, blue eyes, um, and blonde hair. And the height was between six feet and six feet six inches tall. So Casey has these ideas about Atlantis existing in the uh, middle of the Atlantic, Lemuria being a lost continent in the Pacific. But when you go through his readings, there's, there's always some corroborative evidence. You know, it seems totally off the wall when you hear his stuff. But then you have ideas and, and, and evidence like this that come forward that like, maybe there were different peoples living in the region um, that tell a different story of our past. So six fingers and six toes is found um, at different sites in the American Southwest. This is Newspaper Rock at Utah, an ancient petroglyph site. And you find many hands and feet with six fingers and six toes here, including these, these uh, six-toed uh, petroglyphs. This one's particularly interesting. Look at how big this one is, and it has six toes. So it's portrayed uh, specifically and specifically noted in this ancient rock art. This is also a McCornell Ranch in Utah. Look at the giant feet and look at the hands, six toes on each. A recent National Geographic article uh, was called Extra Fingers and Toes Were Revered in, in uh, Ancient Culture. The Pueblo people of Chaco Canyon decorated their great houses with six-toed footprints and sandal-shaped art. Here's one of the kivas at Chaco Canyon. In fact, in room 30 at Pueblo Benito, they found a skeleton of a foot that had six toes on it. And here on the wall uh, at Pueblo Benito, you find these three large footprints with six toes each. What you can't see over here is a normal size five-toe footprint that is much smaller. So initially intrigued by the divine powers attributed to the polydactyls among the Maya, researcher Research is led by anthropologist uh, Patricia Crown of the University of New Mexico <clears throat> conducted a comprehensive view of evidence for the condition of the canyon's sacred Pueblo Benito site. They found this cast of a six-toed um, individual and basically the conclusion is that there was uh, special burials and, and uh, just uh, a reverence for these people who had six fingers and six toes. And we find this in Colorado, in eastern Oklahoma, the six-toed uh, petroglyph is much larger than the others. This is recently sent to me by uh, somebody who was hiking in a canyon in Utah. The six-toed um, rock art is on the right. This is from an old uh, geographical um, magazine, and it shows in Alton, Illinois, a rather large six-toed petroglyph uh, as compared to the five-toed one. You find, uh, you know, basically all the southwestern states have this rock art where there's six toes and six uh, fingers portrayed. Here again is uh, another one with seven and seven, and there are some of those as well. This is in Utah. This is in Moab. This is in New Mexico. Yes, Kitty, my son must have thrown that in there. This is in Texas, actually. And at this site, there is this giant five-toed uh, footprint. It doesn't have six toes, but at the, on the, uh, the Park Service website, it says this. A large foot, often with six toes, is a common symbol depicted in petroglyphs and pictographs. What do you think this uh, foot could mean? So that's what it says. You know, these uh, professionals are asking this question. So why is it portrayed as particularly large? And then it, you know, it seems to line up with the biblical passage about giants. This is from the historical collections of Georgia. It's from Doc Stevenson. And this is a series of rock art uh, impressions he found. They comprise human feet from those four inches in length to those of great warriors. 
which measures 17 and a half inches in length and seven and three quarters in breadth across the toes. What is, what is a little curious, all the human feet are natural except this, which has six toes, proving him to have been a descendant of Titan. Another isolated example of a huge foot with six toes, and that's right in the middle at Track Rock Boulder right there. So in Morse's Geology in 1838, we have this account. In the state of Tennessee, two miles south of Brasstown in, on Enchanted Mountain, which is at the headwaters of the Tennessee River, are found impressed in the surface of the solid rock a great number of tracks. The human tracks are remarkable for uniformly having six toes each. One of these tracks is distinguished by the, uh, from the rest by its monstrousness, being of no less than 16 inches in length. Once again, unusually large uh, footprint associated with this idea of six fingers and six toes. Uh, I've been looking for this site around Brasstown Bald and Enchanted Mountain. It hasn't been refound since 1838, but it's another site in, in these uh, uh, set of states around North Carolina, Tennessee, that, that have this, um, I, this um, representation of six fingers and toes. So Mooney was a researcher at the Smithsonian, and he recorded the Cherokee legend of Judah Cull Rock. A legend describes the giant leap down off his mountain to a creek below where he scratched the rock with his six, uh, seven-fingered hands. And here is a uh, representation of his seven-fingered hand right there. And the ancient belief of the Cherokee is that there was a giant who lived in the area with, with seven fingers. So at Camp Crittenden in Arizona, we have this account from 1891. While digging for a commercial building, a giant stone coffin was uncovered. The project manager didn't want to wait until, oh, uh, didn't want to open it until an expert was called in to examine the strange find. When finally opened, a granite case was found inside, which appeared to have held a body of a man at least 12 feet tall. A carving on the casing pointed to the fact that he had six toes and fingers. In Baja, California, at the Coso site, uh, we also have six fingers and six toes represented, but in a particularly interesting way, there was an ancient native uh, tradition that there was a race of giants with six fingers and six toes that the uh, peoples of the time, the indigenous peoples, warred with. And you'll see right here, this, this joker-like being has six toes on his right hand. But also we have this six-toed um, being at war with these uh, five-toed beings. And right here, six fingers, and he is littered with arrows. And this one right here, you'll see six fingers, six fingers. And whoever this, this uh, ancient person is, he is uh, tuned up with a bunch of arrows just uh, trying to uh, piece together if this, this ancient um, idea of a, a war between the two races occurred. So all around the world, you find the same phenomena. In a series of caves in China, we have the Buddha represented with six fingers on each of his hands. Now, once again, this, this idea of polydactylism is associated with malevolence and benevolence, with the divine and the supernatural. And the Buddha is represented with, with you know, six fingers right here. And this is an interesting account um, from Madrid. There is one place in the world where the bulk of the population has six fingers on each hand and some residents have seven. Very few have five. The place is the tiny village of Cervea de... Uh, Butrago, in an isolated section of the Madrid province. Citizens there are so accustomed to extra fingers that they regard a five-fingered hand as normal. Now this, much like the Pueblo area in the southwest, um, there is a incidence of polydactylism that is much higher than the normal rate in, in the regular human population. The question is, are, are, was there an influx of ancient people to these areas and in interbreeding that occurred? that is displayed in the continued prevalence of polydactylism at this point. It, it seems to be the case. There's certainly a much higher prevalence, um, you know, in the American Southwest, and it's been noted in academic papers. Here you have a, vil, uh, a burial shroud from 100 AD, <clears throat> and uh, the woman here has six toes on each foot. 
12 in all. This is an ancient site of Ayin Ghazal, and what you're going to see is some of the oldest statues in the world um, are associated or, or they display polydactylism and androgyny, an another uh, st strange um, topic that I'll get into at length in, in other talks. But right now I wanted to focus on this ancient settlement of Ayin Ghazal. So it first appeared in the MPPNB, which is the, the middle pre-pottery Neolithic B phase, and it's split into two phases. One starts in 10,300 uh, before present and ends in 9950, while phase two ends in 9550 before present. So we have these super ancient statues at Ayin Ghazal, and I'll show you at Jericho as well, that have six fingers and or six toes. So in the Israeli Exploration Journal, the first Adam androgyny in the Ayin Ghazal bus, Ered Ziffer uh, basically points to these statues as, as this parent race of humans. Now here is the foot with six toes from Ayin Ghazal, and this is what the sober academic says about these statues. It is proposed that the Ayin Ghazal statues represented deities the polydactylism, a rare, rare genetic syndrome, of the statues is viewed as a divine attribute and based on cuneiform literature identifies the two-headed busts as the likes of the gods Marduk and Ishtar. So Richard Barnett, uh, his wife posthumously um, published his, his paper about polydactylism in the ancient world and he explained at Ayin Ghazal the statues are a mark of a supernatural entity such as the biblical Rephaim, the race of giants. So this is what uh, Eret Ziffer, the Israeli archaeologist, says. Drawing on Ro Rolofson's interpretation, which understands the Ayin Gazelle statues as ancestral figures instrumental in shaping the histor uh, historical identity of their makers, I would like to suggest that these statues represented mythical ancestors from the dawn of mankind and that the two-headed busts among them represent the first human being, the androgynous prototype of humanity that had six fingers and six toes. So you have this, this idea uh, being contemplated by academics. So here is the site of, of Jericho right here. And this is a uh, pre-pottery uh, Neolithic B site. So it's 10,700 to 8,000 years old. And once again, you have a six-toed statue found at this site. And here's the ancient tower of Jericho. And here it is right here, a representation of it. So you, you're finding that this, this um, polydactylism is represented in some of the oldest statues on the planet. At the Ayin Age site of Tel Demi'ai, it's at a um, Air Force base in Jordan. It's a protected site. And uh, what they found here at the at this site was these two anthropomorphic statues that have six, they're, they're androgynous and they have six uh, fingers apiece. So another example of polydactylism in the ancient world. In Jordan, we also have a series of really uh, superb dolmens that you find in the Caucasus and the British Isles and everywhere else. So it's... Uh, you know, attributed to these ancient builders and, you know, were they um, associated with this lost race we're talking about, these supernatural beings. At Hamad Gadar uh, in Israel, Jordan border, there's also th this find from the Israeli Exploration Society a Journal. The enormous right foot and the left hand depicted on the marble slabs each have six digits. Then we go over to Paracas and uh, Peru, where we have elongated skulls. But we also have um, this uh, big pot that represents polydactylism in the hands. Each one clearly has six fingers, and the feet strangely just have five toes each. So this is another example in a different part of the world. And a new study out last year actually uh, said the following. Uh, this Prehistoric polydactylism, biological evidence, and rock art representation from the Atacama Desert in northern Chile. So th this study, and here's the authors, went in Chile and Argentina and found a vast amount of sites with six fingers and six toes carved everywhere. You'll see some of the, the examples right there. This is the region. See all the sites that are numbered uh, had rock art with six fingers and six toes. 
Here's some more of the representations of what we're talking about. So, moreover, this is uh, quoted from the, the academic paper. Moreover, the broad dispersion of hands and feet in rock art images with polydactyl in Chile and Argentina could suggest that it was more frequent than currently documented in the bioarchaeological record. Now, I don't know if that is true or it's, you know, just the case that this attribute was so uh, thought of as divine and supernatural that it was portrayed over and over again. But it's nice to see, you know, academics looking at this problem. Templo, uh, Templo Mayor in Mexico City is an Aztec site. Here are the ruins of it right here. This is what it looked like in its heyday at Tenochtitlan. Uh, the entire area uh, was surrounded by Lake uh, Oaxaca. I'm sorry. The entire area was surrounded by a great lake. And this is what the reconstruction looked like at the time. So here you have the lake all around um, the old city. And this is what modern day Mexico City, where it lies today. So right when you go in the temple, there are two... Um, murals of deities, and they both have six toes on each foot, uh, oddly enough. <clears throat> so I took pictures of each of these, and um, I just found it really astonishing that right in the museum, you have the, once again, you have deities associated with this, this genetic condition, <clears throat> which is associated with giants. So there's another Aztec site right here with six fingers, and here is uh, the Palenque ruins in Mexico. Here I am visiting uh, a couple of years ago on a tour. And all around the site, this is a, from a Maya uh, polydactylism academic paper, you find six fingers and six toes specifically noted. And you go over to Teotihuacan, and you find uh, the, the same thing. In Mesoamerica, human representations with six-digit hands and feet are identified in lithic sculptures from Palenque, clay model figures from Teotihuacan, and Zapoteca ceramics. So these beings or these entities are often displayed with six fingers and six toes. And here I am, I think with the same shirt in an Olmec museum, and both those beings, uh, the, these deities, have six fingers uh, on their hands. You see right there. And oftentimes I'll travel to museums and I'll, I'll go, you know, all around the world and I'll find examples of this on Philistine coffins or in S Sumerian places and, and uh, different museums that have never been noted before. Like this androgynous being, this deity on the right from Ecuador has six fingers clearly on the hands. Now this one has five. This isn't like, oh, the artist screwed up. This is, you know, like clearly being represented here. In Tulum, and this is a really beautiful place in Mexico, uh, an ancient temple site, a Mayan temple site, you have the Temple of Frescoes. And in the backside of this temple, you have a seven-fingered um, painting. And this is an Etruscan fresco. And this, this deity, this is a, like a supernatural god who has to put on some pants, but it is noted in the academic journal that he has six fingers once again on each hand. And at the Getty Museum, you have this fertility goddess who in this well-worn worn, uh, limestone uh, representation of, of this ancient being has six toes on each foot. Now, women would hold this fertility goddess and pray to this ancestral deity to uh, have you know, a benevolent birth. And you gotta ask, why is, is this being portrayed with six toes, this ancestor deity? that um, is written about in academic papers and is super, super ancient. So the fertility goddesses, uh, goddess with six toes implying superhuman qualities from southwestern Cyprus goes from back to a period of 3000 to 2500 BC. So these super ancient sites, these super ancient statues are all representing polydactylism. This is in Marlik, Iran. I, I believe it's 1900 BC, if I'm not mistaken, these ancient statues. Clearly, six toes on every foot right here. And here's another one. Six toes on every foot. And then you go over to uh, Thailand, and at this uh, rock shelter, this super ancient site, you find a hand that has five uh, fingers right next to a six-finger. 
fingered hand in an ancient cave site in Thailand on the other side of the world. Now, the, this uh, idea of, of extra fingers and toes goes into mythology. Kukulain is, is a member of the Tuatha Da Danin who showed up on the coast of Ireland. Uh, some think, you know, uh, well, th there are these stories that go back and talk about invasions before and after the Great Flood. And uh, Kukulain uh, was, was considered this divine, benevolent uh, god, if you will. <clears throat> and he is specifically noted. I'll give this account here. Each foot had seven toes and each hand seven fingers, the nails with the grip of a hawk's claw or a griffin's clench. So this is from um, this, this particular uh, mythological academic paper, but you can go to Wikipedia to find out about Kukulain having seven fingers on each hand. And what's, what's notable about him is he was called uh, the foam of the sea and showed up in metal craft um, along with, with the Tuatha de Danin, these mythical beings from a lost world who had advanced technology. And you go on the other side of the world to Lake Titicaca, where uh, Viracocha emerged from the lake on a raft of serpents, you know, the foam of the sea, he was called, and he is portrayed with six fingers and six toes oftentimes as well. So you have these ancient beings from a lost world who show up, restart civilization, have supernatural abilities, and then there are specific uh, notations of, about their um, abilities, their, their supernatural traits, and their polydactylism. This is from, uh, it was found in 1938 by <clears throat> German archaeologists in Tibet. You see the backwards uh, swastika sticker, and the Buddha-like figure here has six fingers on his hands. This statue was made from axotite, meteoric iron. And you'll see he is uh, associated with six uh, fingers once again. So this is another example from Iran of, of six fingers on each hand. I'm just showing these examples all around the world to really make this case that it's not just a coincidence. So from 1000 to 650 BC, we have that sculpture there. This is the uh, Irish giant from Strand Magazine in 1895. I can't uh, attest to the, um, you know, reality of this any more than anybody else because it doesn't exist anymore. But what I can tell you is this giant was on display. It was uh, sent around to carnivals and, and people paid to see it at, at the time in the late 1800s. But it had uh, six toes on its right foot and was 12 feet tall. Here's an Egyptian coffin lid, clearly one, two, three, four, six fingers. Here in the Medical uh, Journal of Malta, you have this account. Congenital malformations, a historical perspective. Polydactyl is evident in a handprint described from the Hal Saflini hypogeum in Malta. So you have these ancient ruins all around Malta, and there is a six-fingered handprint also on the wall here at the hypogeum. I spoke to the, the curator there, and they said they were aware that it's reported but they've been, been unable to find uh, where the handprint is now. So I'd like to go in there with some kind of, you gotta get special permission, but some kind of technology to see if we can, you know, refine this handprint. But once again, the, this land, this area that's associated with giants, Malta, just like Sicily and Sardinia, has six fingers and six toes associated with it. And also at the other temple of Hagar Kim, you have uh, congenital malformations. You have a statuette that had six fingers uh, associated with it. Here's a picture of the temple, super ancient temple. Before uh, Gobekli Tepe was found in Malta, these were considered the world's oldest temples. Uh, and here are the statues I'm talking about. And uh, we go over to Australia and we find, once again, we find you know, these legends of giants, guardian spirits, androgynous beings, the uh, ancient Australian Aborigines have an androgynous god as a creator god, just like the Zuni and native tribes do, or the beings Oannes and, and, uh, that show up in Samaria and the other beings there, uh, fish gods, they're considered androgynous. And even Viracocha in South America is known to be androgynous. Now, it's, he, is, he is represented as male, but these beings are always portrayed 
as sexless beings who create humanity from, from the earth, you know, in supernatural fashion. So once again, the, this, this idea is, is shared all around the planet. So you have this six-fingered guardian spirit right here. And <clears throat> this, this uh, particular uh, piece of rock art I've been, been unable to find, but I'll, I'll read it right here from 1959. For instance, a rock drawing found in New South Wales, Australia, shows a double-headed human male figure, nine feet six inches long, with six hands on the right, uh, six fingers on the right hand. And I will say that just like the Ayn Ghazal statues, there are a lot of academics who point to androgyny being portrayed as a two-headed statue, as a male and a female. So you find this verified by academics, and it's it's all around the world. And this androgynous spirit being is nine foot six with six fingers on his right hand. And, you know, for me, I, I just try to like, I don't know, I, I find a real interest in piecing together all this ancient rock art, uh, myths and legends and esoteric teachings and try to make a case that this seems well beyond coincidence. You know, you could say, oh, you know, <clears throat> I don't know what the hell you could say, but frankly, how you could uh, really describe what is going on all around the planet with the myths and legends of giants, the association with polydactylism, and then the proof right in front over and over again. This isn't always just normal sized beings. Often they're portrayed as giant. These, these uh, cultures that had no connection with each other. So that, that's what kind of piques my interest in, the, in this matter. So here's another being, the one on the right, uh, left has five. This guy has six on each hand. This is a giant spirit, uh, spirit being from Australia as well. One, two, three, four, six on each hand and six on each foot. That is pretty specific. You know, and our, our thoughts about Australia uh, and the peopling of Australia are changing rapidly these days too. I'll read this account here uh, that just came out. 2018, Aboriginal settlement in Australia was no accident. Aboriginal settlement in Australia was no accident twice. Purposeful voyaging on this scale relied on advanced cognitive, linguistic, symbolic, and technical capabilities. It would have required construction of watercraft and well-developed na uh, navigation technology, as well as planning and information sharing. Now, there was a multidisciplinary team of scientists that basically um, took on the study of how people populated ancient Australia. And oftentimes to fit theories that don't work, uh, scientists and academics come up with kind of ridiculous notions like, um, oh, these people must have been uh, uh, sent to this place after a flood. Um, you know, there was a hurricane and they were on a raft of reeds and that's how they got to this island and things like that. Instead of maybe these ancient people had the ability to navigate. So you see a lot of confirmation bias in the alternative area and in modern day science where I have this theory and let's, you know, ram the, the square peg in the round hole. But as many as many uh, researchers have been suggesting, Australia looks like it was founded earlier by a much more sophisticated people. So here again, we have six fingers on the uh, hands of this being. I found this in the old literature from the 1800s. Um, there were aboriginals who came over to the mainland from, a, from an island they lived on, and they had these old drawings on bark. And one of the drawings was this strange being that has six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, this divine and supernatural being this isolated race before they died out uh, basically portrayed, uh, you know, part of the mythology of the creation uh, on, on this bark parchment, and it was recorded in uh, an old academic paper. So this is the kind of thing that, you know, you piece it all together, and it's like, whoa, you know, and if you just read it individually, you say that's interesting, and what I'm trying to do once again is, is make this case and, and portray how ubiquitous uh, this this feature is. So at Mat Singh in Botswana, Africa, we have the emergence place of, of the, the great God that, that shows up and he has six toes. The footprints of Lanao Laga Kualbe is said to have uh, belonged to an enormous man who like Mat Singh, Mat Singh is the original God, lived thousands of years ago. He was a six-toed individual with massive feet. The footprint of one of these large feet was imprinted 
on a rock outside of Acadia. So here is the impression. The site was found in the 70s and it's being preserved now uh, in Botswana. But it's the place of emergence of the giant and he has six toes once again. And here's another example of it. Uh, here is Credo Mutwa. He is a Zulu shaman and he specifically, he has um, ideas about the past, uh, you know, about extraterrestrial influences and things like that. He's a mystic and a shaman. And he says that six fingers and six toes are the mark of the supernatural Zulu god. He independently says this in his work, in his books. In Tanzania, you have this being with uh, two hands, uh, particularly large hands, that have six fingers on each. Now, this was brought to my attention by Michael Tellinger. I know Hugh Newman visited this site. There's this, what seems to be a giant footprint in South Africa. Now, I'm not claiming somebody stepped in uh, the mud 200 million years ago, but maybe it is a representation by the indigenous peoples. Whatever it is, it's a giant footprint, and it actually has six toes. I think it's kind of quite striking to go along with the rest of uh, the information I'm putting out there. So, you know, all around um, French Polynesia and, and the Pacific, you find the same phenomena. You find statues, these creator gods, all throughout the Pacific Islands, just like this one here. So I think outside the, um, it's from the Austral Islands and outside a museum. One, two, three, four, five, six-fingered gods. Terry Dahl is an explorer, like uh, he's a Norwegian, like Thor Heyerdahl. I think he lives in Australia now. And he was um, on our show, Search for the Lost Giants, and I'm, a friend, I'm friends with Terry. And he said what got him interested was <clears throat> in giants was he would travel to all these Pacific islands. All these statues had six fingers and six toes. They were associated with giants. And all the local people told him the legends uh, of the giants inhabiting these islands. Like in Kiribati, you have the footprints of Tarawa, and the uh, anthropologist I.G. Turbert says the following, the short account is, fa is a factual report without any personal comments or interpretations of the position of the two series of footprints appearing on Tarawa Atoll in the Gilbert Islands, as shown to me and explained by the old men of Tarawa. Here's a picture of the site. <clears throat> Here is one of the giant footprints right there. You see six toes. There it is right there, a little tough to see. The book describes in detail the evidence for the prehistoric giants and the record of the gigantic footprints. Here, various footprints can clearly be seen in the volcanic stone, some of them so huge as to seem impossible. Most have six toes on each foot. And you, here's one of the elders uh, stepping into the stone right here. It's a giant footprint. This particular footprint is said to be the left foot. It sinks a good inch into the solid rock. A coral limestone has 12 toes and measured three foot nine to four foot six in the to uh, from toe to heel. <clears throat> its counterpart, the right foot, is reported to be near the village of Tenk and Ranga on Mayena, a separate island in the Gilberts, some 20 miles to the southwest of Tarawa. So you have another footprint, uh, the match of this 12-toed giant. Make of it what you want. I think it's, once again, pretty interesting. So in Fiji, this is from an archaeological report, you have a handprint on the cave wall that has six fingers. And you go over to Easter Island. Now, Georgia Lee was an archaeologist who did her uh, thesis by spending time many years on Easter Island. And <clears throat> she seemed to be particularly interested. She wrote the rock art of Easter Island. She was particularly interested in the idea of six fingers and six toes. And here is one of the figures from uh, Ranu Rakuru on the island, and she uh, displays it there. But she also points out that the mysterious Birdman has six fingers here. And right here, the arrow, this is from uh, the Peabody Museum. It was taken from Easter Island. And Georgia Lee, the archaeologist, points out it has six toes as well. And we all know about the famous statues. And what is lesser known is some really uh, amazing megalithic work there that looks like it was uh, of the same style and vintage as what you find in Peru. So in Pohnpei, you have more of these megalithic buildings. I point out these structures because 
there is a megalithic Pacific, basically. There are structures around the, the Pacific Islands that some researchers think are, are uh, leftovers from a lost continent, from a Lemuria, if you will. And this is on Nan Madal. And here is Tonga right here. And here is the Trilithon of Tonga, a just really astonishing megalithic feat. And these islands, these isolated islands, are littered with this kind of megalithic building. At the Altamira Cave in, in Spain, you have super ancient rock carvings. They could be up to 30,000 years old. And right here, you have a spirit being with seven fingers. And here, you have a hybrid antelope gazelle human. Sometimes shamans will portray like this supernaturally, and he clearly has uh, six fingers. And once again, you have this hybrid being. Sorry, I, I looked for the original in the Stockholm Museum. It's in the back room, so I, I have to go with this picture of it. But this, uh, in the academic paper, it says this Greek figure, or this hybrid figure, has a left hand, a huge left hand that has six fingers on it. And these winged siren hybrid beings uh, are found from Anatolia to Greece uh, in, I think, around 1500 to 2000 BC. They're cauldron holders and they're often portrayed with six fingers on each hand. Now, my friend J.J. Ainsworth sent me this. This is the, a hybrid scorpion being, I don't even know what it is, on a man bag, and you'll see it has six fingers right there. So you have this representation associated with hybrids, with supernaturals, with giants, with a lost race. Uh, in fact, you know, I'm a believer in the collective unconscious that we're sharing one mind as much as we probably don't like it at some point. But these ideas keep like getting dredged up and looked at and represented. And there is this idea of a parent race. In fact, Anne Rice, you know, she wrote a series where uh, there, there was a, a parent race with six fingers. And I know that's fiction, but these ideas, they, they seem to make sense that, that, you know, of all I've showed you, all the divine attributes, all the statues, the fertility goddesses and the giants and the places of emergence, it seems like there is a story here. And it's even uh, show, shows up in art, six fingers here, uh, six toes on St. John the Baptist in this painting. The first uh, Adam in the Bible was actually androgynous. The second was human. And right here, Jan Van Skurl, 1540, his painting, uh, sorry, it's, uh, it's well noted this has six fingers. It's just a tough uh, picture. One, two, three, four, five, six. So androgynous beings are also associated with this. Like at the Temple of Esna, Kanum created humans on a potter's wheel, just like Viracocha of the earth and, and Fu Shui and Nuwa in, in um, China, these androgynous creator gods. And this Temple of Esna is dedicated to an androgynous god. He is known to be this androgynous being, and he is portrayed as having one, two, three, four, five, six fingers. And on the other side of the ocean, we have our friend Viracocha, and here is Tiwanaku. Viracocha is right here. Now, he is well known to be androgynous. Google androgyny and, and Viracocha, you will find the old stories. Uh, he is thought to be a giant and, and a survivor of a lost civilization who emerges from Lake Titicaca. So there is a vase that um, Maurice Cottrell wrote about in um, The Lost Tomb of Viracocha, and it has a bas-relief with six fingers, and it looks like this one here. I can't find the original. Maurice hasn't sent to me yet, but I do know that Viracocha is represented in the German Museum, and he has six toes on his right uh, foot, and he's basically portrayed as a hybrid being. So, you know, what do you make of all this? <laughs> you know, what do I make of all this? I really feel like, um, you know, if you're an academic, you can pick away at pieces of this, but it's tough to start talking about hybrids and gods and the supernatural and be taken seriously. So, you know, I like to think of myself as a goodwill ambassador from the lunatic fringe, and I, I just try to piece together this information and tell a mythological tale about our past. And I think there's something to this. It is well beyond coincidence. That, that's what really gets me. Uh, I'm not, you know, I don't have any skin in the game, like, oh, I got to prove this case, or, you know, I have to de defend my position endlessly. I think any rational person strapped down in a chair and forced to listen to me talk about this for an hour will say, 
there's something to the story. I don't know truly what it is, but it seems like, uh, you know, there's something here. <clears throat> and like I said <clears throat> at the beginning, this resonates with some people, and some people just don't want any part to do with these controversial subjects. I'll just say, you know, if you have an open-minded orientation around it, and you start looking, and you start searching museums and ancient sites, you hear a different story. Uh, so I appreciate your time, and um, glad to share this strange information with you.